So I'm going to talk about a basic lesson that I did with a uh, freshman in high school world uh, history class called World Studies. Uh, we're studying ancient civilizations and uh, more generally just the characteristics that might make up a, a civilization, uh, specialization, etc. Um, and really I, what I wanted the students to do was learn the characteristics of civilization in general uh, by utilizing specific ex examples from specific civilizations. So the two examples that we were looking at was me uh, were, were Mesopotamia and Egypt. Um, and I decided to do this using uh, Minecraft in the classroom. Uh, one of the reasons uh, that I chose to use Minecraft is basically because um, there's lots of press about it out there that it is a useful tool in the classroom and I wanted to see what it was all about. So after reading, there's a lot of information out there um, about this and people's different uses in the classroom. Uh, I decided that this is a good idea basically because of the sort of open format um, that it gave to the students, lots of tools it gave to the students to be able to uh, create stuff and, and the ability for them, uh, the students to be uh, creative problem solvers in a sort of immersive environment. Um, another reason is a lot of the students actually play this and really enjoy playing it. So uh, there's no reason not to bring something like this into the classroom, I think. Uh, my experience was that uh, uh, basically I don't have a ton of experience with Minecraft, but that's actually uh, a really good thing, I think, in the classroom, especially at the beginning. Um, uh, using it. I think you don't need a ton of experience to bring this into the classroom. I think you play around with it, see what the possibilities are, look at what other people have done, and uh, the students actually become, in a certain sense, the teachers, which I think is a really valuable uh, teaching tool. Um, so basically, uh, the lesson itself is, is pretty simple, and, and the three goals of the lesson were to, to retain the objective information that was being presented. Uh, history is history, and you need to know uh, certain pieces of information, of course. Um, one of those pieces of information being, for example, a ziggurat. What is it? What does it look like? What was it used for? Uh, so in building these things and creating them and having reasons for placing them in certain fashions and building them in certain ways and in certain places, the students had to really think about what they were doing, how they were doing it, and in doing anything at all, I think really uh, retained the information uh, better than, than reading the textbook and taking notes or um, watching any sort of video or, or filling out any sort of chart um, or, or graphic organizer. Um, also, I think in building the civilizations from scratch, the students are really uh, having to understand the challenges faced by early humans. Uh, one of the things I asked the students to do is really think about why they were doing certain things, why they were placing certain things in, in certain places. And basically, uh, in order to justify themselves, the students had to really think about the challenges that were faced. Where are we going to build this wall? Why are we building this wall? Um, where are we putting the crops? How are we going to make sure that the crops still grow? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then uh, on a sort of skill level, I was concerned about the students understanding uh, source materials like ruins, for example. Why do we care about these buildings that are fallen down or perhaps even buried? Well, in creating uh, these ruins from scratch, not only could they see the sort of thought process that went into creating them, where they were created, and things like that, but also it's sort of a backwards approach, um, uh, I should say backdoor approach, to teaching the students uh, what exactly uh, the, the civilizations were thinking. So now when they look at, at ruins, for example, they can draw these inferences or ask historically interesting questions um, about about the the you know the ruins of the building or the or the remains or, or potsherds or anything like that. Um, along with building the civilization of Minecraft, the students had a presentation and a written component where they had to justify everything they did. Um, and because it was early in the year, they didn't have a ton of access to uh, to research information. I didn't want to overwhelm them. Uh, so they were using generally their textbook, and they did some really interesting stuff. Um, so we'll look at some examples here. Um, here's an example of uh, students who really latched on to uh, the Egyptian civilization. Um, so if you look, you can actually see that uh, there's a student who spent a lot of time essentially trying to recreate the, the Great Pyramids. Um, these aren't built to scale. Um, I wasn't really concerned about the students really copying what these civilizations did, but instead taking the information that they were giving, given and uh, trying to build the civilization as they uh, saw fit. So 
um, the, the pyramids here are built. Uh, one of them you can actually uh, you can actually go inside. Um, And in this uh, pyramid, uh, the things that, again, are discussed in the book and things that uh, the Egyptians may have been interested in. Um, so we have this sort of false chamber here. Uh, we have a chamber with uh, canopic jars. And uh, the students actually hid the burial chamber so well that sort of after the fact, I can't find it. Um, but they did have a burial chamber in here as well. So these are the things that are representing the canopic jars and other things that might be in the pyramids. Um, and they also built a, a couple of houses and, and, um, for a wealthy person, for a poorer person. Um, in this world, uh, this is one of the interesting examples and I think really shows... Um, uh, how this can be a great learning experience. These students really tried to represent all of the characteristics of civilization. Uh, you can see down here there are some uh, domesticated animals. Um, you can see that there are villagers wandering around. They had a trade market. Um, they had some, some irrigation canals. And here they attempted to recreate something akin to a ziggurat. Um, and one of the things they did, they were very concerned about dealing with the challenges uh, that, that were faced by uh, these early people, and they actually put the crops inside the building. Um, obviously, this isn't correct for, for a whole host of reasons, but it really, to me, showed that the students were actually trying to solve the problem of uh, trying to protect the crops. Um, and I think it's a, a learning experience. So instead of saying, no, you guys are wrong, uh, this is a really interesting way of uh, creatively solving the problem, but you can address it with the students as you're going through the project and say, well, that's actually really interesting that you did that, but this is actually not uh, even, even possible, and also, um, you know, it's not something that they, they would have done. But, it, but again, I think an interesting way uh, and creative way to think about it, and this is something I think that, that we need to be encouraging the students, obviously. Um, so one more example uh, the uh, the last example I'll show you. Um, let me find it here. Shows a really compact and and I think reasonable uh, uh, example of the civilization. So the students wanted to deal with this in a very effective fashion. So they knew they had to build a wall around the city. They knew they had to build a ziggurat in the city. There are um, animals, domesticated animals. There are um, they built a rich person's house, a poor person's house. Um, they, they built crops with irrigation, and I think as they were presenting, they told uh, me specifically what crops. And they actually, I think, had to create these rivers. Uh, sometimes you can actually find these rivers in the world, but they built the land out to make sure that this sort of reflected the Tigris and the Euphrates River. And in doing so, I think, obviously, they're trying to, to match up and learn the information and utilize the information, but also they're looking at the, the, the challenges that one may have faced um, as, as someone in these ancient civilizations, having to deal with the geography and environment and, and things like that. Um, in terms of any sort of issues that, that one may face in trying to do this in their classroom, I would say um, time is a big factor. This, uh, we did a lot of the um, ob objective uh, material, the textbook reading and note taking outside of the classroom, and then worked on this inside of the classroom for a few days before the presentations. Um, I think the fact that the students enjoy this so much means that they probably did a little bit of extra work on it at home, uh, which is a good thing, I think, for a few reasons. They're not forcing them to, but they're, they're enjoying it so much that they can. Obviously, the cost of the program could be an issue. Um, buying the full power computer program can run you around $26. Um, it's a handful of dollars for the iPad program. Um, I'm in a fortunate situation where I have a one-to-one -one iPad program in my school and a lot of the students have laptops besides and already have this game on their computer. So um, you, the, the uh, best scenario would be having that sort of situation, but perhaps uh, using a computer lab is, is the alternative here. Um, 
And just an aside, uh, in terms of the game, there's also a survival mode. This is what's called creative mode. Survival mode, there are actually uh, things that might come and attack you. Um, so you do have to make sure that you have food supply and have certain um, uh, protection from, from the environment and from these, these things that come to get you. Um, and one of my students, actually, as we're doing this, uh, suggested this, this might be a more um, accurate representation of the challenges faced by ancient civilizations. And again, this is the sort of thought process that I was trying to inspire uh, by doing this. So it was a really cool comment. Um, I didn't want to put the students under a lot of stress by, by placing them in that situation. But maybe, maybe next time we do this project, we will. Um, thanks.